Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So we've been doing a series of short videos on how to do different D11 pre-qualified procedures and tests. Uh, today's no exception. We're going to go ahead and do a horizontal joint or a 2G as it's called, which means a horizontal groove weld. So let's go back to the board. We'll talk about it a little bit. So this is uh, basically the situation we're going to have. We're going to go ahead and read everything from left to right. We have a backing strip on the other side. So here's our backing strip, 45 degree single bevel V right here. So the bottom plate is going to be 90 degrees. This top plate has been beveled to 45 degrees. Okay, and we have a quarter inch opening, quarter inch root opening. So here's our quarter inch. The joint designation for this is B-U4A, okay, regular horizontal weld. So let's go ahead and talk about weld sequence. So let's talk about weld placement, okay? We know that we always work from bottom to top, like we're building stairs. We wanna build the foundation for our next weld. The first pass, however, that I'm gonna put in here, I wanna tie my top plate, bottom plate, and this backing strip all together. Okay, so that should be pass number one right here. And then what I'm gonna do, in pass number one, I'm gonna come in roughly maybe 90, 95 degrees, okay? Pass number two, I'm going to place right here, okay? And that'll be roughly at a 45 degrees. Roughly, okay? You're just going to have to watch your puddle, see how it's flowing for you, and make changes as needed. Pass number three, I'm going to put right on top of pass number two. And I'm going to point in about five to 10 degrees below 90, okay? So that's pass number three. Pass number four will be our first cap. Pass number five will be our second. Pass number three on the cap will be our sixth pass. So roughly six passes on this one. Uh, angles are gonna be very similar to the first set, so I don't wanna get you all confused, but this will be good for pass number one and five. This one will be good for two and four. And this one here will be good for three and six. Okay, so let's go ahead over to the stand. We got everything set up. We'll get our machine dialed in, talk about exactly what the joint looks like, and then we'll go ahead and start welding it out. So here's the, here's the plate that we're actually gonna be working on. The bottom part is 90 degrees. The top has been beveled to 45 degree angle. And inside here, we have a quarter inch root opening, okay? And I just use a regular quarter inch piece of steel to set that gap. It's just easier that way. I fit everything up on the table, tack it in, and then I'll go ahead Verify my gap before I tack everything in. Get a couple tacks on there, double check it. All right, I find that using a spacer is just a lot easier. It makes work a lot faster. You're not sitting there messing around with a tape measure, uh, you know, or squares trying to get it all set up just right. Just make sure you got a quarter inch root opening in there. Right, let's go ahead and talk about equipment setup. All right, we're going to be using the shield and metal arc welding process today. We're going to go ahead and weld on the Rebel 235. Uh, we'll go up and set our uh, arc force and hot start. So our hot start about 26 percent and then arc force i've got about 20 percent arc force or dig as it's sometimes referred to on other machines we're set up here 125 amps because i'm using an eighth inch 7018 electrode so it's going to run very similar in horizontal as it does on flat so i shouldn't have to make too many adjustments so we're running dc reverse polarity uh, i have a workpiece clamp as close to my workpiece as possible so it's actually on there run on and run off tabs are about inch inch and a quarter on each side. Uh, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna start on the run on tab and I'm gonna work my way across that joint. Remember, I'm gonna hold it right in there and I'm gonna try to tie all three pieces together, get this as flat, get the weld as flat as possible so I can stack everything in there. Uh, I'll probably have to do a hot, or, uh, I'm sorry, I'll have to do a restart, probably about halfway to three quarters through. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do a restart. We'll finish that off and then we'll lay the rest of the passes in there. I uh, use this run-in tab. I'm going to need it. So I don't get a low, low bead profile at the start of the plate. I'm just manipulating this well just a tad to make sure I'm getting that top plate to tie in. I 
I keep going, but we're going to go ahead and terminate right here just to be able to show a stop and start. Okay, now anytime we do a stop and start, you want to make sure that you clean the area thoroughly. <clears throat> a lot of people will just chip back about an inch away from where they're going to do their tie-in. I got in the habit of just cleaning the whole thing up. That way I'm, I'm sure not to pull any slag or trap any slag in that area. Go through with a flashlight, pick set, make sure you have nothing stuck in there. No slag inclusions, no lack of fusions. Double check, make sure everything's good before you proceed into that test. <clears throat> I do have a little bit of slag right here that I need to clean out. I always try to use the point of the chip and hammer and put it in there, just kind of scrape back and forth. Because you don't want to go beating on this thing all willy-nilly because you can put tooling marks on the surface. And for some tests, that can be an automatic disqualifier. All right, ready for the tie-in. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about 3 eighths to a half inch ahead of that crater. Strike there, tie back into that crater and just keep moving like I never stopped. And make sure to use that runoff tab to my advantage. I wanna make sure I don't have low fill at the end of that plate as well. All right, so that's pass number one. <clears throat> like I said, it can't be too clean, so spend the additional time getting everything cleaned out. Now pass number two, this one's gonna be fairly simple. I'm gonna start on the run on, run -on tab just like any other time. But now when I go in here, I'm going to treat this just like a fillet weld because that's exactly what it is. I'm going to lay 50% of this, this second pass on that 90 degree edge. The other 50% is going to tie into that root pass. So I'm going to point in there roughly at a 45 degree angle, just a slow steady pull. So on this, on this second pass, I just want to make sure I don't come too far out to this edge. I want to stay about an eighth inch below because when I go to do the cap passes, I want some material to be able to stack that pass onto. So when I'm watching this, I'm just gonna make sure I stay an eighth inch back from the outside edge of this and you know, just make a good tie-in on that, that, uh, that root pass. Like I said, 50% coverage, and then utilize that runoff tab because we're, you know, the ends is where you, people usually uh, screw up. They have uh, underfill on the ends because they don't utilize those run-on and runoff tabs adequately. Clean it up really good. Go back through, get you a little inspection light. Make sure you don't see any dull gray or brownish areas. That's usually slag. Just go through and get it all out. Take a little bit of extra time cleaning. Now because if you look on the inside of your electrode holder, stinger, whatever you want to call it, I have a bunch of different little grooves in here. So I can point straight up. I can point at a 90 degree angle. I can point at uh, roughly a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go ahead and use that to my advantage. So I don't have to, you know, if I put it at a 90 degree angle, then I'd have to lift my wrist back further. What's that do? That puts my, my handle and everything much closer. So as I start getting shorter, I can only use so much of that rod. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick that out to that, that angled portion right there. That way I can go all the way up into that joint if I need to. And it's, it's going to be less fatigue on your hand because you're not cocking your hand back in an unnatural position. So use those to your benefit. You could also run it straight out of the top and get in there just like that. Whatever your preference is. Just get comfortable while you're doing it. Nice and relaxed. Okay. If you're comfortable when you weld, it's going to reflect. So if I need to, I can do a little bit of manipulation. I just do like a bump, almost like dribbling a basketball. Okay. Just kind of like a, a little bounce. Okay. A little pause at the top. And we go right through the whole thing. And then end on the runoff tab, make sure I, I fill in that edge there, or that end. All right, so I'm just gonna hit this with a temp stick because I'm getting ready to go to cap. I usually like to keep my plate under 350 degrees. So I have a 350 degree temple stick. If I put it up against here and it melts, I'm gonna go ahead and wait about five to seven minutes before I go to cap. This helps a lot of newer welders, you know, especially when they get into this, they have a tendency to run this test as fast as they can and they end up with a lot of undercut on their cap. Even though they're, they're watching their travel speed and their work angles, you can still end up with undercut because of the excessive heat. So that thing's melting pretty good. So I'm gonna give this about five to seven minutes before I go in to run my cap, okay? That's just gonna, it's gonna be a benefit. Take your time, do things very slow and methodical when you're running one of these tests. If you're out in the field, different story, if you're in production, you're gonna to wanna to speed through it a little bit. You know, just watch your quality uh, and just try to keep your, your inner pass temperatures, you know, set at what it is for the welding procedure spec that you're following. Or, you know, my personal preference, like I said, keep it under 350 degrees as you're in between passes. So we'll, get, we'll go ahead and let this set five to seven minutes and then we'll go ahead and hit the, uh, we'll start our first cap. 
All right, so we waited about five minutes. Cameraman's getting a little impatient. He's got stuff to do. And it's, it's good, okay? So it's, it's not, the temp stick isn't melting. It's actually marking on the material. So that means we're under 350 degrees. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and put in pass number four. Pass number four is going to be the first of my three bead cap. So I'm gonna run that just like a fillet weld, very similar to when we ran pass number two. I'm gonna come in at roughly a 45 degree angle, go right over top of this. Now what I'm looking for is the bottom edge of the, uh, the, the puddle to come over the edge of this plate about one eighth of an inch. Okay, I don't wanna go up any higher than that because that's considered excessive weld reinforcement and they'll bust you out for that. So remember flush to eighth inch on all these D113 eighths plates and you'll, you know, you'll be good to go. So we'll go ahead and start that in now. Still gonna use this run on tab. This is, this is where all the other passes using this run on tab is gonna come into effect for, the, for you know, the end, right? So I don't have a low spot at this run in right here. So because I have that material built up, I'll go ahead and start back here and work my way right into that joint, making sure that I'm flush to eighth inch throughout the, uh, the piece and then use that runoff tab so that I'm not low at, that, at the end. Remember to clean up the ends of the run on and run off tab up really good. You don't want to pull any slag that you left in there because you got lazy or weren't paying attention. You don't want to pull any slag up into that into that plate. You get porosity that way. All right, that was pass number four. Now we're ready for pass number five. It'll be very similar to our first pass. I'm going to come up probably, probably just below 90. Strike off and tie in there trying to hold that top edge there and then we'll be ready for pass number three now as i'm under here it kind of looks like i may need to run two more passes so remember i'm always laying the groundwork for the next pass so once i get done with this i'll probably be i might have to run two passes to finish that out we'll take a, a better look at it once we get the slag off and get the uh get the weld cleaned out all right so i have here a vwac gauge it's a visual weld acceptance criteria gauge and i noticed that on the pass that i just put in i'm a little low so i'm under flush but because I'm not done with that test yet, I can put a little filler pass in here that'll bring me up to that, that flush area. So what I'll do is I'll strike off on the run on tab, bring it up in there until I hit the, uh, the part that I am above flush with. I prefer to be above flush. And then, uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll run the rest of them passes in there. So probably just inch and a half, maybe inch and three quarter weld. I'll go ahead and mark it out with some, uh, with some soapstone. Just give me a little visual cue where I need to stop. Okay, so on this pass, my whole goal is just to kind of fill in this big void that I have left. That way, once I'm done, I can stack one more pass on top of here, and then we should be right at our mark where we need to be. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna travel a little bit slower and try to build up some of this area. I'm just trying to go off the same sequence that we had on the board. We're just gonna go ahead and add one more extra weld, so we'll have a four bead cap once we're done. All right, so again, pass, uh, this will be pass number seven. I'm gonna point slightly upward and I'm gonna ride right down the center of the edge of that plate. That way that whole thing gets consumed. I'll be a little bit over the, uh, probably about an eighth inch over the material, so I'll have a good tie in there. And then I'll just blend that into the, uh, the previous passes underneath. Right there, I'll catch the edge of that plate. Watching the top half of that plate, or the top half of this weld, erode the edge of that plate. Gives me a nice little center line to follow. So keep the rod in the center of that, that hard line there. It should be fine. Keeping a really tight arc length, keeping that puddle pressed up against the material. I want to, I want to make sure I get a nice flat bead once I get done. Too far of an arc length will let that weld start to hump up. Stay in there kind of tight. It's like reading by braille. I can actually feel that steel getting cut out by this rod. You notice my travel speed is just a touch faster. Right here at the end, I'm going to go ahead and pause. Just kind of fill in that crater. Okay, so here's kind of what we were going for. Um, but I, I think, kind of hindsight 2020, I should have put one more, you know inner pass in here, so one, two, then three, four, five, six, seven, 
Uh, tucked them in there a little bit tighter, but you know, just one more pass right in there, right over top of my root, instead of the uh, the two beads that I put in there. I think a little bit thicker one would have pushed my uh, elevation out just a little bit more. So we ended up putting seven in there. Still pretty close overall. It worked out in the end. You just gotta kind of be ready for changes. Remember, you're always laying the foundation, the groundwork for your next pass. So whenever you're doing that, sometimes you gotta make changes on the fly, learn to adapt. Like the uh, the one area at the beginning where I had a little bit of a low spot and I had to go in there and run like a little two inch bead just to build that up. Okay, it's perfectly allowable. Things like that are gonna happen. So you can kind of see this one over here on your left. We went ahead and ran another one and I put that additional pass in there. That one worked out exactly uh, how I anticipated the, the first one to turn out. We got the three bead cap on here. The one on your right, um, this is the one that we ran on film. Turned out pretty good. I mean, overall it turned out pretty good. I'm not as happy with it as I'd like to be. I'm right at an eighth of an inch high here and I'm just a touch low, almost, I mean, it's not even measured on the, um, the VWAC gauge, so I'd venture to say about a 64th of an inch. Um, but you know, just practice, practice makes perfect, you know. All right guys, I hope that helps you. If you have a 2G test coming up, go ahead and practice, see which method works for you. You could also run weaves in there if you're more comfortable with that. It's, it's gonna be up to you and the inspector. So hope you guys learned something. We definitely uh, enjoyed making the video for you. Until next time, make every weld better than your last.